Hey guys, it's your favorite Dinobot here, and today we have the King Titan versus Godzilla himself from the MonsterVerse. This is actually a pretty popular debate, believe it or not, between Ark and Godzilla fans. And believe it or not, it's, I guess you could say in some ways, it's fair. I mean, you do have, you know, everyone making their arguments and everything for the King Titan because he's bigger, he's able to summon meteors and stuff. And then you have the Godzilla side of the things, you know, just using the atomic breath, the um, fire Godzilla form and stuff, how he's able to scale to things like multi-continental and, you, you know, just the feats in general. But today here, we're going to break down each one of their feats here and just give a general consensus on who would actually win this match more often than not. Without further ado, let's begin. So starting off with Monster vs. Godzilla here, and obviously a little things here, we're not going to use anything relating to Godzilla x Kong, the new empire, and obviously nothing in pertaining to the Godzilla vs. Justice League crossover. The reasons why is because, one, they're not finished, and the other one really isn't out. So, no Godzilla evolved here. However, we will be using Burning Godzilla or Fire Godzilla just as much as we'll also be using the Alpha King Titan. So, without further ado, where does Monster vs. Godzilla scale? I think it's pretty simple here. You can easily scale him to things like Planetary, maybe even Star Level. If you go with the whole entire thing of Kamazots being able to black out the entire sun or somehow being able to destroy the sun not sure how that would have worked but again Kamazots is known to be a global or at least a planetary threat which i actually think is pretty consistent as he was noted to be able to black out the entire planet or find some way to cover the entire planet or plunge it into darkness meaning no form of light this may mean he was going to bend the storm to the point where he was going to basically use it to engulf the entire planet so that it could roam freely in pretty much a, I guess you could say, a realm full of darkness, right? Godzilla has also been able into, sorry, Godzilla has also been able to tank the Permian extinction in his younger years, which wiped out over 90% of life on Earth, which is easily a multi-continental feat. Then you also have Ghidorah being confirmed to be a living extinction event, which would have again caused him to be multi-continental. And again, Godzilla would scale to these monsters and the other monsters that would scale above his younger self as well, which would easily put them at least at the planetary ranges. And again, Kamazon himself was said to be able to affect the entire planet. Which, again, Kong was able to beat before, and again, keep in mind, this is before Godzilla and Kong interacted with each other, meaning Kong would be stronger than that in the movie, and Godzilla was still able to overpower him. So, again, you have your planetary feats. Now, Godzilla has a plethora of hacks and abilities pretty easily. He has his regeneration, which is honestly just... You know, state of the mark, you know, um, I'm sorry, not state of the art, uh, you know, like with every Godzilla. However, Godzilla's regeneration really, we don't know what its limit is just yet. Godzilla has been able to regenerate his dorsal spines after they were shattered and blown off completely by Muto Prime. Keep in mind, that means he would actually have like his, you know, radiation or his atomic breath pouring out of his back here. And he was still able to regenerate that. He's also been able to regenerate from cuts, scrapes, and bruises caused from Kong, Mecha Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Tiamat, the Murder Fish, and so on and so forth. Godzilla also has his standard atomic breath here. His atomic breath has been able to push around monsters much larger and sometimes much stronger than him. And he's actually been able to bypass some creatures' immunities to it, like the Mutos and stuff like that where they were actually able to, um, they produced this nuclear field, right, or this electromagnetic field that kept Godzilla from using his atomic breath. Yet, Godzilla was still, still able to overpower it and overcome it. All right? Then, you also have Burning Godzilla. Burning Godzilla, while it doesn't last very long, it lasts like three nuclear pulses, and that's it here. Burning Godzilla is a is a transformation where Godzilla's radiation is at its max here. And he has the power of a red giant, again, a star here, going supernova. Putting Godzilla at, again, star level ranges. Because, again, he wasn't able to destroy the entire, he didn't destroy the entire planet when he did it. And, again, this only lasted for three nuclear pulses. 
to which are basically thermonuclear energy and were able to incinerate Ghidorah despite Ghidorah's healing factor being to the point where he could regenerate his head and possibly his body. So again, Ghidorah should probably have cellular level regeneration as he was again able to regenerate his head, including things like the muscle, the tissue, the bones, okay? Every part of him was regenerated and yet burning Godzilla was able to just melt that away easily. So yeah, that would actually conclude for Monster vs. Godzilla. He's easily a planet to star level threat. But now let's move on to the King Titan. Now arch scaling has kind of been all over the place, at least for me in general, as I've seen people, I guess you could say scale the arc verse all over the place. Some people put a multiversal. Uh, it, yeah, I know it, it's it's crazy, right? They put a complex multiversal. I've seen people get it to like universal and stuff like that. It's it's ridiculous here. However, from what I've seen, what I've been able to gather, what I've been able to kind of look into myself, especially pertaining to the Titans in general, is that the King Titan dash the Alpha King Titan that we'll be using here um, is above all the other bosses in Ark, including the other Titans who are kind of next to nothing to him. All right. The King Titan was pretty much one of the few things to cause all this corruption so he has a you know he has these hacks and abilities he has his fire breath he can summon meteors which again if they're coming out of earth's atmosphere or the planet's atmosphere meaning they were probably coming from um what's it called was it saturn saturn's astro belt or something like that where he's able to somehow pull these things down and just start like smashing these other dinosaurs and stuff with him yeah he's absolutely ridiculous Keep in mind that even the average Titan is giving mechs a hard time here. It took both Helena and I think Mei Ying, who both were in mechs here. And keep in mind, these are like the top tier characters in the arc verse, right? They're like the tippity top here. They are like other than you, you and your character, these guys, or sorry, these ladies are the tippity top when it comes to arc, right? So they've been able to slay a bunch of these corrupted creatures and stuff which you can actually scale from, I would probably say around mountain level, or if not island level on a couple of occasions. But again, the bosses here could actually scale from country level. And I've actually seen people get Rockwell to planetary, considering the sheer fact that he was able to cause the, I guess you could say the collapse of most of Aberration's surface here. And again, he was still able to, you know, survive in the element that and even mutate himself. But even then, when people put these guys in like versus simulators, the King Titan is still able to decimate a large majority, like a real large majority of all of Ark's bosses from top to finish, including the likes of Fenrir, who actually is like probably one of the closest ones I've seen to almost beat the King Titan. So yeah, um, there are plenty of creatures and characters that you could easily scale the King Titan above here. You have Godzilla Ark, who is able to pretty much decimate a large portion of all of the uh, other Ark bosses as well. Even being able to almost stalemate the Ice Titan. You can even scale it above, obviously, the Dreadnoughtus, who is, seems to be on the same tier as the Ice Titan here. So again, there are plenty of bosses here. And again, you can interpret this as you will. I know some people get Rockwell to like country level. And again, this is by their own calcs and feats and stuff, the stuff I've seen for them. But based on what I've been able to gather and based on what I've been able to reasonably conclude here, Rockwell should be around the country ranges respectively, especially with other monsters being above him. Like, again, Godzilla arc and stuff like that. And then you have the Dreadnoughtus. You have the Carcharodontosaurus as well. You know, these other creatures that can easily damage and harm the Titans. And even being able to beat these other bosses just in a one against two or a one-on-one -on -one type of confrontation. Keep in mind that in Arc Fajor, you can actually use Gigas to fight a large majority of the bosses. So again, it it is what it is, but again, you still have, you know, 
a large portion of these arc bosses that the king titan and thus the alpha king titan just scales above here keep in mind he can also cause massive explosions with his attacks even charging up a devastation punch or whatever or pretty much like this meteor punch if you really want to get into that and just devastate the entire area and pretty much killing a large majority of the dinosaurs he can still you know defeat mechs defeat wyverns astro cetuses and stuff like that and in all honesty, it's just, yeah, I think that's pretty good for the King Titan. You can easily get him to a plethora of scaling. You can easily get him to country level, multi-continental, to planetary. Possibly even higher if you really want to use that outrageous scaling. But without further ado, let's really talk about this match as a whole here. Who wins? The King of Monsters versus the King of Titans. And in all honesty, um... I think these two are well matched here. I think they're just as fast as each other. Maybe Godzilla should be a bit more agile because of his size. He's just a bit smaller. And the King Titan possibly could be a bit stronger. I mean, it's, it's up for interpretation. However, Godzilla should be able to tank a large majority of the King Titan's attacks pretty well here. His regeneration is able to kind of carry him through some of the more deadlier and dangerous attacks. And you also have the sheer fact that he's also tanked the Permian Extinction, which should have a greater impact than a large majority of, you know, the meteors that the King Titan is using here. And again, I think they both count to each other pretty well. If not, Godzilla's durability would actually be slightly better than the King Titan's because he has that, that regeneration, that healing factor. And again, like I said earlier, he can tank a large majority of the King Titan's attacks here. I think that this will start off with Godzilla trying to get close in the beginning. I really do. I do think Godzilla will try to get close and see if he could overpower the King Titan. But the King Titan will try to keep him away the best that he can here and try to avoid that physical confrontation until it's absolutely necessary. Because again, you really don't see a lot of you know, arc um, beings other than the Mega Mech that are around the same size as Godzilla and the King Titan here. But I do think Godzilla's atomic breath will probably give him a good range and possibly even harm the King Titan to a larger degree than his physical attacks here. Now, if he goes into his burning state, then we have a pretty good um, argument for Godzilla getting in close and possibly even melting through the King Titan's tough, you know, hide his body and stuff like that overall while i do think this is a high difficulty battle for each one i would probably award it to godzilla matter of fact i would award it to godzilla at least the first five out of ten times here i think this is really close and i do think the king titan can take it especially if he starts like spamming on godzilla but more often than not, I would more so lean towards Godzilla taking the win here because he can tank a large majority of King Titan's attacks because his durability and the healing factor is just slightly better. And he has a lot more long-ranged attacks here, or at least a lot more potent long-range attacks that can kind of cut through the King Titans. But hey, that's going to be all today, you guys. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share it to your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Peace.